How's it going Eliminators? Today's video is going to be all about regular maintenance and not letting a piece of equipment with an issue get worse. So let's get right into it. So we picked up this snowblower here and my customer said there was a noise coming from the auger housing whenever he engaged the auger. My guess was that it was most likely a worn out auger bearing and if you'd like to see me replace one of those you can click the link in the top right of your screen. So the first thing that I noticed when disassembling this machine was that the belts were very old and worn. Both the auger belt and the drive belt needed to be replaced. Two Kevlar belts, they'll run around $46. Once I split the snowblower apart I checked the play in the bearing and sure enough it was a worn auger impeller bearing. This one turned out to be really bad. So I have the auger housing separated from the snowblower, pulley came off nice and easy, but the reason why normally you have to remove the auger assembly with the axle is because of this right here. So you can see that we have the bearing housing loose. The problem is when you go to loosen off the nut and the bolt comes loose as well. And if you take those nuts off, the bolts fall in there. And because the second stage is in there, they have the big plate in the second stage, you can't reach up there. So normally you have to pull everything out, then you can pull that off and then you can go ahead and put your new bolt in and then put your new bearing on and then put your nuts on and then go ahead and slide your axle with the shaft back through the new bearing and then you're good to go. And this is what I'm talking about. So there's your second stage and you can't get at those bolts to hold them. This has to come out, but it's fairly simple. Just a couple bolts here and there, she slides right out. So by taking the axle and the auger out, you can now go in and get at your bolts. Starting to wear out the hole, starting to bore it out up there, no good. So because this was left so long, the bearing ended up being completely destroyed. We can see here that there's absolutely nothing left of it. The bearing housing is all that remains. You've actually started to wear down your shaft. So after all the years of driving it with a bad bearing, you've, you've ground this shaft down. So I've taken the bolts out of the second stage here, push that back, and then what we're gonna do is remove this key that's stuck in there, and then I'm gonna have to lay some beads of weld in here and really fill it up, and then we're gonna machine it once I get the gearbox removed because I gotta take this whole shaft out. So that right there is how long the keyway is. The problem is I'm gonna have to fill that all up with weld, and I'm not gonna be able to remachine another key in there. So the only bit that I'll have that is keyed will be this spot right here for the pulley. But we can see that the old bearing just grabs down this key the shaft everything what a mess so I got the key inside of the pulley here just to measure the length and I think we're gonna be lucky because just to where the point that it ground down is pretty much the exact same length as the pulley needs so we're getting lucky here extremely lucky okay gearbox is taken apart disassembled I got the shaft out now I can start to weld and then we could send it off for machining now I measured this shaft using a vernier caliper and it measured to 7 8 of an inch OD that's outside diameter now the worn part at the lowest point measured about 80 thousandths of an inch less to replace this shaft would cost over $100 so I decided to weld it and then remachine it back down to 7 8 of an inch once I welded it we sent it off for machining and this is what you see here. The shaft has been sanded down with emery paper to allow the bearing to slip on without too much play. This is known as a slip fit. At this point, I began reassembling the auger gearbox. Using some Stenz double zero grease to keep things lubricated as well as some Permatex gasket maker to help keep things sealed up. So we were now ready to reinstall the new bearing into the bearing housing. We then bolt the bearing assembly back onto the auger housing. And the reason for giving the bearing a slip fit onto the auger impeller shaft if you ever have to remove it it needs a little bit of play and that allows you to slide the auger assembly in and out of the bearing using a bit of permatex nickel anti-seize will help prevent the shaft from seizing onto the new bearing I also installed two new Kevlar belts again both the auger belt and the drive belt and then we reassembled the snowblower so what have we learned in today's video had I have gotten to this machine a little bit earlier this repair bill would have been much cheaper than what it was also if my customer kept an eye on this machine he could have seen that the belts needed to be replaced and he could have replaced those parts last year which would have offset some of the repair costs. Now again today's video wasn't necessarily a how-to. If you'd like to see me replace an auger impeller bearing or the worm gear in a snowblower gearbox I've linked those videos down in the description down below. I just wanted to take some time today and kind of explain that regular maintenance is important on your machine because if you get something like this snowblower here where an issue was left and it continued getting worse as the machine was used if my customer would have come to me earlier when there was a little bit of play 
in the auger, then I probably could have just replaced the bearing and he could have replaced the belts a year earlier and offset some of those costs. But because he left it so long, this repair bill ended up being well over $300. So a word to the wise guys, keep an eye on your equipment and keep performing regular maintenance. But at the end of the day, I was able to get this snowblower running and operational again for my customer. We ended up saving over $120, I think it was, by welding and remachining the shaft instead of going and purchasing a new one. And at the end of the day, my customer got his machine back and it is fully operational. So if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.